Let's ultrasound. On today's edition of Ultrasound Physics Review, we're going to talk about perpendicular versus oblique incidence. Let's start out by defining incidence. The angle at which a sound wave approaches a boundary is the angle of incidence. The angle that a sound wave approaches the boundary between two different types of tissue, also known as media, helps determine whether transmission, reflection, and or refraction will occur. There's two types of incidence, perpendicular and oblique. Let's talk about a few other ultrasound angles. The angle at which a sound wave continues on past the boundary is known as the angle of transmission. And the angle at which the sound wave reflects back to the transducer after striking the boundary is the angle of reflection. So you can see this in the diagram. In the red arrow, the sound wave is approaching a boundary and the angle created between the sound wave and the boundary is known as the angle of incidence. The blue arrow delineates a sound wave that is continuing on past the boundary and the angle that that sound wave creates with the boundary is the angle of transmission and the green arrow depicts the angle of reflection. This is the angle created between the sound wave that's reflecting back to the transducer after it strikes a boundary and the boundary. The first type of ultrasound incidence is known as perpendicular incidence. And this is when a sound wave strikes a boundary straight on at a 90 degree angle or a right angle. The sound wave is exactly perpendicular to the boundary. And this is also known as normal incidence. And you can see this in the diagram. The red arrow is the sound wave and it is striking that boundary at exactly a straight on or 90 degree angle and we call this perpendicular incidence. The second type of incidence is known as oblique incidence, and this is when a sound wave strikes a boundary at any angle other than 90 degrees. Think hard back to geometry class when we learned about acute angles and obtuse angles. In the top diagram, the sound wave, which is the red arrow, is striking the boundary at an angle of greater than 90 degrees. This is known as an obtuse oblique incident angle. In the bottom diagram, the sound wave, which is the red arrow, is striking the boundary at an angle of less than 90 degrees. This is known as an acute oblique incident angle. It's important to note that with oblique incidents, we cannot determine whether reflection or transmission will occur. We'll talk in a later segment about reflection and transmission with perpendicular incidents. With oblique incidents, if reflection does occur, the incident angle angle, this is the angle at which the sound wave approaches and strikes that boundary, is going to equal the reflected angle. This is the angle between the reflected sound wave or echo and the boundary. So just remember, oblique incidence, the incident angle is going to equal the reflected angle. And with oblique incidence, whatever is not transmitted deeper into the tissue must be reflected. The transmission and the reflection must add up to 100%. So the incident wave intensity equals 100%. And that incident wave is the sound wave that first strikes the boundary. And then whatever is transmitted, the transmitted wave intensity, this is the sound wave that travels further on deeper into the tissue, the percentage of that plus the reflected wave intensity, this is the portion of the sound wave that is reflected back to the transducer. If you add up that percentage and that transmitted wave percentage, they must both equal the incident incident wave intensity, 100%. So transmitted wave percentage plus reflected wave percentage must equal the initial incident wave intensity, 100%.